Actually, no, I'm kind of a late bloomer with it because I was a huge reader of suspense. And, you know, when you're a kid, you read back when I was a kid, we read like the R.L. Stein and, you know, the um, Nancy Drew and all those. And I was like, oh, yeah, I want to figure out who done it. <laughs> but my um, start, actually, my sister was very into literature. And so she would read to me at night under the covers with a flashlight. And it was things like Dickens and Austin and so I kind of got the love of literature that way and I just took it with me into my charitable world where I was give, doing charitable giving and then I read um, Fifty Shades Grey so I mean literally it was that late and I didn't even read it when it came out I read it like five years later yeah. <laughs> so, and I well I was excellent in English like that, I would like, essays came so easy to me, book reports, all that, I was like, eh, this stuff's easy. And I did do some like fan fiction and things like that whenever awesome shows were out, you know, I did that a little bit. But mostly it was just, I loved books and I love to write in general, like people would have, have me write their resumes and their marketing material or whatever. And so finally I was just like, you know what? I love reading so much. I have stories to tell, let me try it out. And so I didn't publish my first book until I was like, 34. Right no, up. absolutely not. So <laughs> before I wrote, I, I released, published Angel Falling first. I actually wrote Body, which was later. I released that later. I was working on that for the very first novel. And I wrote it and then I sent it to my two best friends. And I had ended it. The first book instead of a trilogy, I ended it. And she's like, wow, that was a Scooby-Doo ending. And I was all, huh. I'm gonna have to think about this. <laughs> so I sent it to friends and critiques and I joined online writing schools. Like what this school is everybody, for real, this is how you get practice. This is how you learn how to hone your craft. So I don't like that. <laughs> the whole competition, I just, you know what it takes me, it takes me what? To read a book this size, six hours maybe? Eight hours, I mean, if you're a fast reader, but why am I in competition with someone else for a book? Like, there's so much awesome out there. I think my biggest issue with this industry is actually that people do not hire qualified editors. And that really is my biggest advice to every single person out there. First is hire an editor, a professional editor. If they <laughs> look at your work and they're like, it's pretty good. Okay, well, great. Show me what you got. You know, give them tests. Like they should be willing to test your work and do a chapter or at least five pages and edit it and show you what you need to work on. And if they're not doing that, you're not getting the right editing. So it's like this market is saturated with so much work that's awesome, but it's really poorly done in the editing quality. And so it's like, I'm so picky about what I read. That's the only competition in my mind is if your book has a zillion errors in it, I can handle 10 errors in a book, whatever. But if your book is every page you're finding errors, that's not a good impression. And that's not something I won't put out there for other readers either, because you know we work really hard and everybody should put their best foot forward. You know, So I would say that's my biggest advice is hire a professional editor. Second, if you're gonna get a contract, hire a lawyer. <laughs> Those are my two biggest things in this industry. Otherwise, there is no competition. You do you, boo. <laughs> I think you have to let your ego aside because your ego prevents you from growing. And if you don't look at it from a perspective of knowing that person's heart and knowing that they're the expert, granted, you're not always gonna agree. And there are things that we, are going to disagree on all the time and that's okay but really you should take every little thing under consideration most of the time for me i'm such a cheater i'm like if if i get my edits i literally skim them until there's a lot of red <laughs> i'm like oh let me read this part because the rest is probably right <laughs> she's got it right i got it wrong <laughs> it's and and you know commas those suckers are like glitter, like <laughs> so, <laughs> <my name's rip. laughs> so I have no idea whether they're accurate or not half the time. I'm just like, those things are sparkly. Put them here. <laughs> I'm 
definitely a pantser. I don't really plot. I put pictures on my walls <laughs> and I stick post-it notes on their faces <laughs> so mm -hmm. I can remember important features because I'll forget. I feel like I'm a channel writer. So I just let the muse go. That's why I don't use music. I like silence. It's literally, I just let it flow. And I prefer to start every time writing sitting in front of a blank screen. I just feel like anything that came before might junk up my process. Yeah. So I typically, if I'm already in the middle of a manuscript, I'll just read the one chapter before. So then you're not sitting there editing because you can get that. What is it? Edit to analysis to paralysis, right? Yeah. You can just analyze all of your work before and you're never going to keep writing. You're just going to keep editing. I have a like one solid idea. So for Wild Child specifically, it was, I had the scene in my head and it's something we learned whenever we were little girls back in, I don't know, maybe it's California, maybe it's somewhere else. It was always check the back seat of the car before you get in it. And it's because there could be a bad guy hiding there. Well, in this book, there is a bad guy hiding there. And that scene was so prominent to me of, of how the characters would meet. It was like what I'm, what people call the meet cute is yeah. when the two characters meet for the first time. Mine really wasn't a cute meet. <laughs> so I don't necessarily do cute meets or meet cutes. I do like, kaboom! <laughs> kaboom. The kaboom meet. <laughs> it's a kaboom meet. So that scene was in my head. And so then it was like, okay, but this girl is very bohemian. She's all about sisterhood because I'm really focusing, like that's one of the things in your career as you start growing, you know, you've taken that book, you now have 25 books. You have to really think about what your messages are to the reader. And mine right now is really sisterhood and being there for one another and lifting each other up, not tearing each other down. And so I sprinkle that for sure within my stories and make make it very prominent that lifting one another up is important and why. So I would say that I think of like the idea first of like one meet cute or, or a scene in my head. And then it's like, I go backwards. Who's the girl? Okay, who's the guy? I think there's two different <laughs> versions of that question though, only because when you're starting out, there's a lot of drafts. When you've already experienced your world and you know what you want to write and you already have your voice, you already have your style, you, you have your editor in line, you're not wor as worried about things. Because if you do something really crazy, your editor's straight up going to be like, what is this? Like, where, where did that come from? Like, how does this relate? <laughs> you know? Or we don't need this. And it's like, wait, what? I'm going to make you need it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You you end up changing it. That's just the way it works. <laughs> but it's in the beginning when I first wrote, I had, I would say body. I wrote maybe six different versions of that book because it was technically my first. So many versions that it didn't even get published until my fourth. It was mm -hmm. the fourth book I published. So it's like a lot of people, a lot of authors don't even publish their first novel. You guys, it's yeah. a lot of people have a book sitting in their cash and they're like, there's that. <laughs> Not touching it anymore. It's nope. <laughs> Learned from this guy. Now I can write. I adore well, everybody, you. Like I said, sign up for Women's Writing Academy. If you want to write, this is where you go to do it. Not only is Jeannie a creative writer and teacher of creative literature, she's also an editor. She's my editor, personal editor. So she does all my number one titles. You and see. this is something you guys need to do. It's not too expensive. If you want to write, you need to put in the effort. You need to sacrifice a little bit. Do your studying, do your training, learn some of these things. Learn how what novel writing is. Learn how to develop characters. Learn how to develop plots. Learn how to plot. See if you like that. A lot of people do. <laughs> you know? It's it's definitely important if you want to write to get a little bit of education under your belt.